Now, we I would like to talk of few important experiments in superconductivity. Now, till now you have seen some very important experiments, namely the Meissner effect, the magnetization showing perfect eye magnetism, and you saw the experiment relating to specific heat, where you see a jump in magnetization, a uh, jump in specific heat, and this jump in specific heat corresponds to an opening up of a gap in the density of states around the Fermi energy. Okay, that was the interpretation. So now let us look at. So this is telling us microscopically something is happening to the electronic state. That once you go below the superconducting state, there is something else happening in the system where there is an opening up of a gap in the density of states and so on. Now let us explore this issue a little bit more closely. And there were certain very important experiments, which were path-breaking experiments, which elucidated the mechanism of uh, superconductivity, helped to make. Uh, us understand the mechanism of superconductivity in a better way. So the first is relating to ultrasound attenuation, which really confirmed that there is an opening of a gap in the density of states of the superconductor. Okay, and it has other implications also, namely the electron phonon uh, coupling, uh, the scattering or uh, electron phonon scattering uh, becomes weaker once there is an entry into the superconducting state and so on. So the ultrasound attenuation was very important in elucidating the microscopic uh, result that uh, the electron phonon scattering gets affected once you enter into the superconducting state. And um, uh, the next experiment was the isotope experiment, which again gave an intuitive understanding, which helped us to develop the understanding of superconductivity. So first, I would like to discuss the ultrasound attenuation in superconductors in a little bit more detail. It's a very important and a very interesting experiment, a path-breaking experiment for superconductivity. So I would just like to uh, elucidate a bit about this experiment. So what does this experiment involve? The experiment involves a pulse generator, which generates set of voltage pulses. Okay, they are inside each voltage pulse. So these voltage pulses are generated at a few hundred hertz. That means the time interval between the two pulses is few hundreds of, uh, few tens of milliseconds. So that is why it gets a pulse of hundred hertz. And these are ten megahertz pulses. Inside each of these pulse, it is a ten megahertz pulse. Uh, so these are the type of pulses which are generated. These are voltage pulses which are coming. And these voltage pulses are striking the, uh, this is a piezo crystal, a quartz crystal. For example, you can take a quartz crystal, which is a well-known piezo crystal. Okay. So these voltage pulses come and strike a piezo crystal. This is your piezo crystal. Piezo crystal. So the voltage pulses start out from here and are being sent to the piezo crystal. Now, once they strike the piezo crystal, what happens is that you know that a piezo material is such that if you apply voltage across a piezo material, if you apply a voltage across a piezo material, then this material will change its dimension. So uh, it will expand or it will contract. So if you send an oscillating wave, so instead of a DC, if I send an oscillating wave to this piezo crystal, this piezo crystal will start oscillating. Okay. And this oscillating piezo crystal is kept in contact with a sample. Okay, this is the material whose properties you want to measure when you are hitting it with these phonons or vibrations which are coming, which you are imposing externally on the material. So very often these piezo materials are deposited directly on top of the uh, material to be investigated or you can uh, also connect it by some uh, epoxy or something you can put it some glue or some epoxy which you can connect it but basically it is to transmit the vibrations the phonons you want to transmit the phonons or excite phonons inside the material which will be getting transmitted or these vibrations will be transmitted through the material so so what you do is that you, so once the first pulse comes, so once this first pulse comes and strikes, it generates 
vibrations okay it starts vibrating the crystal the crystal is starting to vibrate at 10 megahertz so you you generate these uh, pulses okay and these so it, the first pulse comes and strikes okay and uh, it generates these vibrations which are shown in these green circles so these vibrations are excited in the material by the piezo crystal because this piezo crystal is vibrating it is in touch with the material so it transmits the vibration and now inside the material the vibrations propagate through compression and rarefaction of the uh, it's like just sound waves propagating through the through air similar compression longitudinal waves are generated inside the solid okay so there are these ions which are vibrating there are compression and rarefying action so there is a compressed region then there is a rarefied region so these uh, waves with the wavelength at which you have excited are getting transmitted through the material now the wave which is getting transmitted through the material for example this one which gets transmitted through the material goes and starts vibrating the piezo crystal okay so now uh, the piezo crystal opposite uh, uh, acts in both ways if i apply an ac signal to the piezo crystal if i apply an ac voltage to the piezo crystal it will vibrate but if a vibrating piezo crystal if i have a vibrating piezo crystal and i connect it to a meter then a vibrating piezo crystal so you have a vibrating piezo crystal and i would like to measure the voltage across this vibrating piezo crystal so if this piezo crystal is vibrating then the a uh, sinusoidal voltage will be generated across the ends of the piezo crystal so here the piezo crystal acts like an excitation of vibration and here it acts like a detector of vibration because the vibrations now generate a voltage okay and this voltage is going to be measured by your it is getting amplified and then it is going to be measured by an oscilloscope and the oscilloscope is going to measure the incoming whatever you have sent incoming and whatever you are going to measure in the outgoing the outgoing is the green and the incoming is this so this is the incoming whatever you have sent in the pulses that you have sent in and this is what is the which is being measured at the outgoing end and in the outgoing end so if this is the pulse which has appeared so from the incoming side this is the pulse which has come in and before the second pulse comes in you see a waveform in the output this is the voltage which is generated in the output okay and let us see what is this voltage which is generated why does it have this form okay so what happens is that this piezo at this end let us say the end a and this is the detector end b the piezo at end a excites these vibrations the piezo at end a excites these vibrations and these vibrations travel to this end they excite the voltage in the piezo and you will get the first peak okay this is the amplitude of the peak it is lower than the amplitude of the uh, incoming it is slightly lower than the amplitude of the incoming but the wave has traveled through the medium the wave has traveled through the medium and it hits this end and this end it is vibrating your detector and the detector is generating a voltage and you get the peak of that signal okay that is the peak this is the first peak that you see okay now before the second pulse comes in well before the second pulse comes in the first pulse is already over okay the wave goes and gets reflected back okay from this interface the wave gets reflected back it gets again reflected so the wave actually goes back reflects and turns back and comes back here so once it goes back reflects back and comes back here there is a second pulse which is generated which is an echo pulse okay so it is like an echo a wave has gone hit the wall reflected back and again goes back and hits the same wall once again so this wave goes and hits here it gets reflected so once it hits you will get the first pulse but then before the second pulse comes before this pulse comes this wave has already traveled once again and hits this and you will get a second wave and then again it will get reflected back and hits this you will get the third pulse and the fourth pulse okay 
you will get the fourth pulse and so on and each of this pulse is decreasing in height you will find so there will be multiple reflections before the second pulse comes in and because of these multiple reflections they are going back and forth you will be detecting a peak every time the signal comes back and hits this end b the signal starts from end a hits b generates the first peak gets reflected comes back and again hits b generates the second peak hits back comes back generates the third peak and so on and these voltage peaks is what you will be measuring in this oscilloscope this is what you will see in the oscilloscope and then when the second pulse comes in again it will excite the first peak when this pulse comes in again the entire process will repeat okay and before the other pulse comes in you will again get this decaying behavior so this is how this uh, um, uh, this is the ultrasound attenuation signal and as you can see that the amplitude of the signal is continuously getting attenuated. The voltage, the attenuation of the voltage is V is equal to V naught E raised to minus alpha times T where alpha is the attenuation coefficient. Alpha is the attenuation coefficient and this alpha is the power absorbed divided by the power input you have input in some power okay you have put in some input power into the system however the system is absorbing the material is absorbing some energy from the input power and that is why the amplitude continues to decrease so when the wave goes back reflects through this medium and again comes back it absorbs more power as it goes back reflects back and comes back it absorbs more power more power and so you get this with every round time or every wave the, the extra distance that the wave is traveling every time it is reflecting back there is an exponential decay of the, this thing because some power is being absorbed out of this wave and the wave continues to decay only when the second pulse comes in again the wave recovers but then again it decays before the next pulse just a little bit of calculation that you can see that the time interval between two successive pulses is 10 milliseconds and suppose you take that the time taken suppose the width of the suppose this distance is about one centimeter it's a big sample okay suppose this width of the sample is one centimeter which is about 0 0.01 meters and the velocity at which these waves are propagating you can take it roughly as sound wave velocity so the velocity of the waves which are propagating is say 300 meters per second then the time for covering this distance this distance is 0 0.01 divided by 300 and that would turn out to be of the order of 0 0.01 millisecond this is the time taken 0 0.01 millisecond is the time taken for the wave to travel from point a to point b so within a time of 10 milliseconds there will be multiple reflections which will occur multiple reflections will occur and that is what you will see that before two pulses appear you will see multiple reflection pulses because multiple eco pulses because the wave gets reflected so this takes 0 0.01 millisecond then this again once it goes back it takes 0 0.01 millisecond so after 0.2 milliseconds it again comes back here then again after 0.4 milliseconds and in that way in 10 milliseconds you will get multiple such pulses which will of course exponentially die out okay and you can see this sort of a feature okay now what is happening where is the absorption happening the absorption is happening because very crudely speaking it is actually happening uh, when you have this compression occurring in the system these ions are coming very close together once you are exciting these waves these pressure pulses which are passing through the system they are bringing ions close together the ions are coming close together they are separating out and this is how the wave is propagating through the medium okay but when these ions come close together there is this the electric field distribution in this region becomes very strong so for the electrons which are moving through the lattice the electrons will get attracted and there will be strong electron phonon interaction in this regime the electron phonon interaction in these regimes will be very strong and so they will be scattering more from these regimes and they will be carrying energy so because of strong electron phonon interaction because of strong 
electron phonon interaction in these local regions of compression energy will be energy from the wave from the propagating wave will be carried away by the electrons so because of this strong electron phonon interaction which is happening in these regions of strong in these regions of compression okay there is a strong electron phonon interaction so what happens is that the electron which is getting scattered from the phonon carries away part of the energy of the wave from these regions and because of carrying away the energy from part of these waves you will have some absorption of energy from these waves in the medium so this is this electron phonon interaction which is responsible for giving up part of the energy to the electrons inside the system and hence the energy starts decaying out there is a decay in the system so this was a very important experiment which showed the importance of electron phonon interaction which is present inside the system and exchange of energy from these incoming uh, sound waves which are being transmitted to the electrons inside the system okay so this was a very important experiment to actually look at electron phonon interaction and the uh, absorption coefficient alpha measures how much is the energy absorbed from this uh, signal from this sound wave which is present uh, which is passing through the material okay so these sort of experiments were done in metals and so on what happens if you take a superconductor okay that was the question which was posed so some people instead of an ordinary material actually cooled a superconductor through this through its transition temperature and looked at the absorption namely what is the height of say a single peak okay if we can concentrate above tc what is the height of one of these absorption peaks which is happening it is much less than the input you can see that if this is the input height this is the height of the input then one of these uh, uh, waves which has uh, i mean this this height of this pulse is much less the height of this signal is much less because part of its energy has been given up to the electrons inside the system so the energy of the outgoing uh, uh, wave is has reduced in height okay or the voltage height has reduced okay and uh, the wave amplitude has reduced so the amount of voltage induced has also reduced so we can look at one of these heights as a one changes the temperature of the system and that is going to be discussed in our next lecture